there folks, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you could be here. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about how to clean the demister from your Harvest Right vacuum pump. Now, let me just start off by saying that there are some opposing opinions on this particular topic. Some say when your demister gets too dirty, you should just toss it and then buy a new one from Harvest Right. And if you wanna do that, that is totally cool. But Harvest Right, the manufacturer, actually suggests cleaning your demister. And so in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything that you need to know about cleaning your demister. It's actually super simple. And that way you could save a couple bucks and your vacuum pump can run more efficiently. Now, let me just say that the demister is not something that has to be cleaned very often. But if you're paying attention to your Harvest Right freeze dryer, it is gonna give you some clues to at least let you know when to check to make sure everything's okay. In my case, I noticed that the chamber was not getting the kind of vacuum that I felt like it should have, which told me that the vacuum pump wasn't running as efficient as it should have been. Now, I pulled the oil from it and this is what it looked like. Notice how it is incredibly cloudy. We've got a layer of debris that's accumulated here at the bottom. It's kind of fallen down. And then we've got a clear liquid. I don't know if that's showing up on camera, but we've got a clear liquid here at the bottom. That's actually water. This is what it's supposed to look like before it goes in. So we've got super dirty oil with water inside the oil and that let me know that there may be a problem with the demister maybe it's full of oil maybe it's full of gunk or clogged up and it wasn't doing its job and that's what led me to take it apart and clean it so let me show you how we did it one quick thing before we start i want you to know that before i published this video i sent it over to harvest right and it received their 100 percent seal of approval so know that every tip and every technique that we talk about in this video on how to clean your demister has been approved by the manufacturer. Let's get started. All right, here we have our premier vacuum pump for our freeze dryer. The oil has already been drained out of it. And this little section right here, well, this is the demister. The demister is made up of several components. This outer part that you see, well, that's the cap. And notice that it's locked into place. It doesn't want to slide up. So let me show you how to remove that part. If you look at the top of the demister, you'll notice that you have an image of an oil can with just a drop of oil coming out of it. Well, if you follow that drop of oil all the way to the right, you'll notice an indentation in that cap, right? Now, on the complete opposite side of that indentation is another indentation. Right here, there are two channels that are locking that cap into place, and we need to release them in order to lift that cap up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fingers under both of those indentations with my thumb at the top and just spread it apart at the bottom and it slides right off. And what I've gone ahead and done is place a little mark on each side of the cap with a permanent marker to let me know where the protrusion is for future reference. So there's the first side, this is the other side, and I'm not sure it's gonna show up well on camera, but you'll notice right there at the very bottom, there's a little protrusion that locks into that notch on the base. At this point, just unscrew the demister from the vacuum pump by turning it counterclockwise. Now, I personally like to keep the demister on the pump while removing the cap. I find it to be easier that way. But if you want to remove the demister entirely and then remove the cap, that's fine as well. Watch out for the little O-ring at the bottom of the demister. You don't want to lose that. And now that we have our demister off of our pump, this is what you're going to need to take it apart. You're going to need a quarter and a small screwdriver. We're gonna unscrew the rubber pad from the top of the demister and just set that to the side. Now, I like to take the washer and the screw and just set it in a little cup so we don't lose that. We're gonna put that to the side as well. Now that the pad is off, this is where the quarter comes in. Now, right here, I wouldn't recommend using a small flathead screwdriver because we don't wanna damage that particular notch. So if you have a large flathead screwdriver, that would be ideal, but I find that a quarter works fine. That quarter fits into that notch perfectly, and you can begin turning it counterclockwise. Now, if you're having a hard time, maybe your first go around at this, you could grab that quarter with a pair of pliers and give it a quick turn. That might help you out a little bit. Now, once you get it mostly loose, you could use the palm of your hand to release it. And what you're basically doing is unscrewing the filter part of your demister from the base. Once it's completely unscrewed, it should just come right on out just like so. You're going to notice another O-ring at the threaded part of your filter. You can go ahead and remove that. We'll set that to the side. And there we go. We have successfully taken apart our demister. Now, this has already been cleaned, but let me show you what it looked like when I originally took it off of the pump. And for whatever reason, I didn't film the entire cleaning process, but we'll do it again here in a minute. You've got a lot of gunk at the bottom of the base. The actual filter itself is just super dirty, definitely needs to be cleaned, and it's actually keeping our pump from operating the way that it should. Now, since these are not self-cleaning filters, let's get back to, you know, present day. Uh, we are going to go ahead and have to clean this, and so I'm going to show you how to do that right quick. One last thing I want to point 
point out uh, on this filter is that if you turn it upside down, you're going to notice that there's a little pin right there at the bottom, and inside that pin you have a ball bearing. Personally speaking, I wouldn't recommend removing that pin because you could lose that ball bearing, in which case your demister won't work the way that it should. Now, let me just point out a couple areas that you want to be aware of when cleaning your filter uh, so that you don't cut yourself. Uh, for starters, this little part here at the bottom, this metal piece, does have a sharp edge, so just be careful when cleaning the filter. And this base part right here, uh, the way that that plastic is beveled there at the top. If you put your hand in there and you're not careful, uh, that little top part can give you a quick little slice. And so you just want to be careful that you don't cut yourself when cleaning the base, you know, maybe use like a brush or a sponge just to make it a little bit easier. All right, let's go ahead and take this set up, move it to the sink, and let me show you how I actually clean these components. And there is nothing complicated about this step. We're just gonna go ahead and grab each part individually and a soapy sponge and just begin to clean them until they are no longer dirty. Now notice I am using the sponge part rather than the abrasive part, okay? So let's clean these until they are no longer greasy or dirty. Once we're done, we'll grab another one. Remember the edges on the cap and the base can be a little sharp, so just be careful when cleaning those. Now that that is cleaned, let's look at the filter. You'll notice at the very bottom of the filter on the metal piece, there is a little hole. That's where oil is designed to drain out. Now what I like to do is just grab a sewing needle or a pin of sorts and stick it into that hole just to make sure that there's no obstruction and that it's not clogged up and it feels like it is good to go. Nothing is blocking that hole. So now we can begin cleaning the actual filter. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a couple pumps of my soap onto it and with my thumb, so notice I'm no longer using the sponge. I'm just using my thumb. I'm rubbing that soap into the filter. Pay very special attention to that metal part so you don't cut yourself and then just continue to rub that soap into the filter. That's gonna help get rid of anything on the filter that shouldn't be there, any kind of oil residue, things like that. We want that filter to be wide open so that I can work properly. And I've been scrubbing with my fingers for maybe a minute or two. And once you're done, go ahead and stick it under some warm running water and continue to scrub with your fingers. At this stage, what we're basically doing is removing all of the soap from that filter. And that's basically it. At this point, once you're done, your filter is totally clean. Now, what I like to do once I'm finished is just with my fingers, just give it the old sudsy test and see if it suds up. If it does not, you are good. And we can now go ahead and rinse the rest of the components because our demister is now cleaned. This is the most important step of the entire process because once you clean your demister and its components, they need to be 100% dry before you reassemble them and put them on your pump. So what I would suggest doing is taking your filter and placing it in a warm, sunny area and then let it air dry for about 48 hours. If you wanna speed up the process, you could put a fan on it. As far as the plastic components go, you could take a paper towel and then dry them off immediately. But when it comes to the filter, you do wanna make sure that that air dries and it is literally bone dry, 100%, no moisture. You do not wanna reinstall this onto your vacuum pump with it either being wet or moist. So 48 hours later, let's give our filter a check and it looks like it is 100% dry and that's exactly what we're looking for at this stage. It's now time to reassemble our demister. Let's start by putting on the smaller O-ring right there with the threaded screws are, once we have that on, we can screw the demister back onto its base. And this screws on really easy. You're not gonna need to force it. So just a couple turns until you get it screwed in, at which point you can just take the palm of your hand to finish screwing it in, at which point I'll just take the quarter and give it one little tighten to make sure that everything is locked in place just like that. And there we go. That is the bottom portion of your demister and everything looks good so far. Let's take that rubber cap, place it on the top and that cap should be flush with the base. It shouldn't be elevated in any way. If it is, then maybe you need to screw it in a little bit more. So that should sit flush and also flush with the top part, the part that the screw goes into. We're now going to put the washer back on and put the screw in. That's going to securely fasten that rubber part, that valve, so to speak. Once you have that done, it's time to put the cap on. Now, remember, 
we do need to line up the appropriate notch with the cap. Now, one particular area is completely flat, so there's no notch in that section, while the other one is notched just a tiny little bit. And it's the same on both sides, as you can see. And we need to line that up with the part on the cap that has the protrusion, like we talked about in the beginning of this video. Now, it's hard to see uh, in this footage, but when you open yours up, you'll be able to see it clearly. Now, what I did was I went ahead and marked mine with a little line, so that way I know which part has the protrusion, and that's where we're going to be sliding our base into. I found that the easiest way to do this is to set the cap on a flat surface, and then just line up the base so that all the channels fall into their appropriate spot just like so. Now we're gonna lock it into place by pushing it down so that the notches lock up. Ready? Here we go. There you go. Locked in place, ready to go. When we hold it upside down, it's not coming out. And now for the very last thing is to reinstall the bigger O-ring and that's gonna go right into the groove. The only problem though is that when you turn it upside down, especially after you cleaned it, your O-ring will more than likely fall out, which makes it complicated putting that back onto the pump. What I like to do is grab some of the fresh oil that we're gonna be using to fill our pump with and I just barely dip my finger into it. I mean, less than a drop. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of that oil onto that O-ring so that when we put it back into the groove, onto the demister, it should stay in place. And that'll make it a whole lot easier when you go to screw the demister back on your pump. See that? Not a problem, everything stays in its place. One more time, let's give it a flip, there we go. All right, let's get some oil into our pump and then we'll wrap this video up. When screwing the demister back onto the pump, it should screw in effortlessly. So you're not going to need to force it. Just make sure that the threads are lined up. And then once you get it going, you can go ahead and hand tighten it. No need to over tighten it. And there we go. Beautiful. All right, folks, there you have it. That's how to properly clean your demister for your Harvest Right Premier pump. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And as you saw in this video, it's actually really simple. Just be careful with some of the sharp edges. And before you reinstall your demister, make sure that it is 100% dry. Just put it in a warm, sunny area for a few days so that it can dry out. And in no time, you'll be back in business. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you don't currently have a freeze dryer, but you're interested in freeze drying food, check Check the description box. I'll put a link to the one that we got from Harvest Right, an absolutely amazing unit. You might want to check it out. Give this video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. Thanks a lot for joining us. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.